We've all heard about the midlife crisis, but what about the quarter life crisis? People tell us that our 20s are supposed to be so fun, but are they? People romanticize the idea of being in your 20s because we should be having the time of our lives. But the reality is that it's a time where a lot of people feel lost and lonely. I know I did right after I turned 20. I've never before felt so much doubt and uncertainty. I've never before questioned so often if I'm on the right path. I've never before had so many possibilities abilities but felt so stuck in one place. I've never before had so much painful but necessary change in my life. Throughout it all, I've since found a way to enjoy my 20s, to have fun, set crazy goals and achieve them, and build a life that I genuinely love. This doesn't mean I never feel any doubt, it means that I embrace the uncertainty and trust that I am on the right path. So here are six lessons I learned that can help you navigate your 20s. Just because we know what is right doesn't mean it's easy to do it. Have you ever been with someone who you knew wasn't right for you? Have you ever taken the easy way out because the other path required more effort? I know I have. I've held on to things I knew weren't right for me more times than I wish to admit. Knowing what's right and actually doing it are two different things. We often find ourselves in situations where we know the right choice, but making that choice is tough. Staying in a relationship that isn't working, for example, might feel easier than facing the pain of a breakup and the uncertainty of being alone. It's easier to stick with what's familiar, even if it's not good for us, than to step into the unknown. We also see this every single day. Maybe you know you should be eating healthier or exercise more, but it's easier to grab fast food and watch TV. The right choice requires discipline and effort, and sometimes we just don't feel up to it. I've spent years wishing that my life would change and that I would reach my goals, but I wasn't doing anything to work towards these goals. It it was easier for me to just sit around wishing for something to change than to actually step into the unknown and give my goals a try. Doing the right thing often means facing fear and discomfort and that's not easy. Knowing what's right doesn't make these situations any less scary or challenging. It took me a while to learn that it's scary because it's unfamiliar not because it's wrong. It took me a while to learn that you just have to go for it, even if it's hard and that maybe the things that are tough to do benefit us the most. Sometimes the decisions that make you feel the most scared will be the ones to completely change your life for the better. In the end, it's about recognizing that doing the right thing is often hard, but still necessary. It takes courage and determination. We need to remind ourselves that even though the right path is tough, it's worth it. Life is too short. I've always hated this quote. How can you say life is too short when it's the longest period of time we will ever get to experience? I get the quote now. I just had to look at it from a different angle. Life is too short to hold yourself back. It's too short to be stuck in situations that don't make you happy. It's too short to not follow your dreams. It's too short to not take the risk. And it's too short to say, I will have time later to do the things that really matter. The idea behind life is too short. It's a reminder that our time here is limited and precious. It's about not putting off what we truly want to do. I mean, just think of all the ways we hold ourselves back. We stay in jobs that drain us because we're afraid of change. We tell ourselves there will be time to travel later see the world, to do the things we've always wanted to do. We put off telling people how we really feel, hoping we'll find the right moment later to say I love you, I'm sorry, or I forgive you. Life is too short to be filled with regret, yet if we keep waiting, that's the only thing we'll end up with. It's too short to feel angry all the time and hold grudges. The time and energy we spend on negative emotions could be used to create happiness, to build better relationships, and to chase our dreams. Forgiving others is not just about them, it's about freeing ourselves. Too. Knowing that life is short can push us to take chances and step out of our comfort zones. It encourages us to do what makes us happy and to live with a sense of purpose. Whether it's changing careers, starting a new hobby, telling someone you love them, or finally taking that trip you've always dreamt of, do it now. What are you waiting for? There is no place for ego. In his book, Ego is the Enemy, Ryan Holiday talks about how our ego can be our biggest obstacle. He describes ego as the voice in our head that tells us we're always right, that we don't need to listen to others, and that asking for help is a sign of weakness. If you want to read or reread the summary of the book, check out Shortform, my go-to platform for the best in-depth book guides, audio summaries, and so much more. Through our lives, we often face situations where putting our ego aside is the best course of action, but it's not easy to do. 
Admitting we need help or even just listening to advice can feel like admitting defeat. Maybe you know you should accept constructive criticism to improve at work, but it's easier to get defensive. Maybe you should apologize after an argument and you know that, but it's easier to wait for the other person to come to you. It's easier to stay stubborn and stick to our ways than to face the discomfort of change. But what is the price of ego? Not getting promoted at work because you constantly thought you knew it all, so you stopped learning and improving? Pushing people away because you are incapable of opening up and admitting any weakness, destroying relationships because you're too egoistic to see what you did was wrong. I've never looked at someone who was apologizing and seen them as weak. And I'll tell you a secret. I used to be a really stubborn person, sometimes to the point where I knew I was wrong, yet I still kept my point of view and just continued arguing. I know, it's not healthy. I've worked on that since and I've really gotten better at admitting I made a mistake and that I was wrong in regards to something. The people who have self-awareness and courage to put their egos aside are the strongest people. They understand that growth comes from acknowledging our flaws and being open to change. They build stronger relationships because they can admit when they're wrong and they are willing to make amends. They thrive at work because they listen, learn and constantly improve. In your 20s, there is no place for ego. This is the time to learn, to grow, to build a foundation for your future. It's the time to admit you don't have all the answers and to be open to the wisdom and experience of others. By setting your ego aside, you open yourself up to opportunities and experience that can shape the rest of your life. True strength comes from knowing when to set your ego aside. Stop asking people for directions to places they've never been to. Have you ever noticed that when you talk about your plans or your goals, everyone suddenly has opinions about what you should do with your life? And have you noticed that the ones who are the loudest in voicing their opinions are usually the ones who have no clue what they're talking about? Everyone seems to think they know what's best for you, even if they have no relevant experience. They might mean well and might love to give their unsolicited advice that no one wants to hear, but consider that advice relevant. Seeking advice from these people is like asking for directions to a place they've never been. They might give you an answer, but that answer is likely to lead you nowhere. Let's be honest. Would you take investment advice from someone who is broke? Would you trust relationship advice from someone who is single or constantly in toxic relationships? Please tell me the answer to those questions is no, because otherwise, girl, what are you doing? Are you okay? So whose advice should you take? Look for the people who have been where you are. Look for the people who have the same values of you. Look for the people who offer the same advice regardless of who's listening. Integrity is key. Those who are consistent regardless of their audience are more likely to give you genuine and trustworthy advice. Look for the people who have nothing to gain from giving you advice. Take that. Filter the advice through the lens of your own experience, your shared values, integrity, and disinterests. Once you've received advice that resonates with you and your general view of life, pursue it. However, remain flexible. If you find that the advice no longer aligns with you or your journey, don't be afraid to pivot. Your path is yours. Take big risks. It's easy to play it safe, to stick to the path that's familiar and comfortable. But where's the fun in that? You'll never be as young as you are today. If you're watching this video and you're in your 20s, there's a high chance that you have way less responsibility than you will have in a few years. You're at a point in life where you have the most freedom and flexibility. Use that to your advantage. Have the courage to try stuff, to build a business, to take a trip, to move to a different country, to make new friends. You don't have to wait for the perfect moment because the perfect moment is now. It's the perfect moment to seize opportunities that might seem daunting, but could lead to incredible growth. Taking big risks means embracing uncertainty. It might mean moving to a new city without a guaranteed plan or starting a business despite the odds. It's about pushing the boundaries of what you think is possible and challenging yourself to grow beyond your current limitations. Yes, taking big risks comes with the possibility of failure. But here's the thing, failure isn't the end. It's a lesson, it's part of the journey. And often it's the failures that teach us the most about ourselves and what we are truly capable of. And we are in our 20s. This is when we have the possibility to get over that failure because we have relatively little responsibility and people that depend on us. The point is, don't let fear or uncertainty hold you back. Your 20s are a time of exploration and discovery. Take advantage of the relative freedom and flexibility you have now. Remember, the most extraordinary achievements often come from the courage to take extraordinary risks. Dare to dream big and act on it, because in the end, it's those risks that lead us to the most rewarding experiences. 
So why not take that leap, start that project, take that trip, say yes to that opportunity? Worst case scenario, you learn something valuable. Best case scenario, you might just find yourself on a path you've never dreamt of. Live for yourself. It's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind, the hustle, or whatever you want to call it. We can get so focused on our goals like career success, financial stability, and social status. But at some point, you might start to question whether those pursuits truly fulfill you. And side note, if the answer is no, you might find yourself in a quarter-life crisis. Will achieving these goals truly make you happy? Are these your goals or are they the goals that someone else set for you? Are you pursuing a career because it sounds good to others or because you want to do it? About two years ago, I had to come to the shocking and terrifying realization that some of the goals I was chasing weren't even mine. I had internalized the idea that I had to be this and do that and live in a certain way in order to be perceived as successful by others. And it was surprising to suddenly be confronted with the question, who am I living for? I realized that I'd been living to someone else's definition of success, not my own. And let me tell you, that shit is not fun. It felt like I had wasted so much time doing things for others. The only thing left to do was to finally live for myself. To start a YouTube channel, to start working out with the purpose of feeling good, not just looking good. To change my degree, to chase goals that make me happy, to redefine what success and purpose mean for me, and to finally take control of my own life. But hey, I'm only 22, so what do I know? Maybe I haven't figured it all out yet, but I do know this. Living a life that's true to yourself is far more satisfying than chasing someone else's idea of success. Take a moment to reflect on your own life. Are you pursuing goals that truly matter to you? Are you living according to your own values and passions? If not, maybe it's time to make a change.